spiritual principle of anonymity reminds us that we are all equal in that is anonymous. No one member will the win monopoly and the knowledge of a higher power win. We practice anonymity by offering our love, protection, and respect to everyone, regardless of our personal feelings toward any individual. Every member has a part in the development of group conscience. We are all equal in the expression of a conscious contact with the higher power of our understanding. 64. Tradition to offer guidance for our relationships with others. By loving higher power is the source of direction for now as a whole. This higher power is also the source of the principle that we apply when we serve. We can use this principle when we seek correction as individuals, groups, service force, or communities. Service is for those we serve. Our best talent in service is the ability to reach other addicts, offer identification and welcome. Here's the addict walking in the door for the first time, and help ensure that newcomers return again and again. Any one of us is capable of offering that service. Guidance of a loving higher power, we become better able to help others. Service to the Fellowship of Narcotics Anonymous has its own rewards. When we practice spiritual principles in our daily lives, a stronger relationship with our higher power develops. Our relationship with our group and the fellowship goes stronger. Service in now is a learning experience that allows us personal growth. We will be too lucky and our own interests. Setting aside our self-centered view of life in order to better serve the whole. We benefit spiritually in return for our unselfish service. Tradition 3. Fellowship. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop using. Narcotics Anonymous offers recovery to addicts around the world. We focus on the disease of addiction rather than any particular drug. Our message is spread enough to attract addicts from any social class or nationality. When new members come to meetings, our sole interest is in their desire for freedom from active addiction and how we can be of help. The third tradition helps now offer recovery to so many addicts by freeing us from having to make judgments about prospective members. It eliminates the need for membership committees or applications. We are not asked to make decisions about anyone's fitness or recovery. Since the only requirement for membership is a desire to stop using, we as members have no reason to judge each other. Desire is not a measurable commodity. It lives in the heart of each individual member. Because we can't judge the 
song requirement for membership. We are encouraged to open like the doors of our meetings to any edit who wishes to join. We are asked to extend to others who care and concern that help each of our time they sense of belonging. The third tradition helps now grow by encouraging us to welcome others. Membership is a personal decision reached by each individual. We can do a lot to allow adding the freedom to make that decision and reaffirm their commitment to recovery. We can help them feel comfortable in our groups by treating them as adults, sharing with other adults before or after the meeting, and exchanging telephone numbers. We try to make sure that any adult that's our meeting is not turned away. To the extent that is possible, we choose the most accessible location for our meetings. We may choose a format that reflects any vacation of home. Most of all, we encourage every edit to keep coming back. The strength of any member's desire is not necessarily connected to any outside circumstance. What makes one addict stick in while another returns to losing? No one of us can just to be stick to the power and to be returned to active addiction. There are no guarantees based on text of drugs used or used in history. We cannot predict a higher success rate for addicts of a certain age, or those who use for a certain number of years, or even over men, or any other external factor. Just as we are not capable of measuring another's desire to speak clean, neither are we equipped to decide who should train. We are free to offer work instead of judgment. We look for ways to learn instead of judge. Our task is to find the flame of desire, not simply it. Any addict who was pleased to a meeting, even a losing addict, displays a level of willingness that cannot be discounted. While maintaining an emphasis on the importance of total abstinence, still using addicts are welcome into our meeting with special encouragement to keep coming back. Many recovering addicts do not have access to regular meetings because of incarceration, geography, physical disability, or employment. These addicts are members in every respect as long as they feel that they are to stop using and they are entitled to the same consideration and support as any other member. Addicts attend their first meeting for many reasons. Our motives for coming to now are particularly important. The desire to stop using may not be clearly realized. It may be no more than a subtle yearning for relief from pain. But that yearning wasn't there to seek solutions we might otherwise never consider. Wasn't the experience of hearing other addicts share about Liu Shi Liu. Recovery reignites the desire 
things that we've seen. Oh no, can't do anything. Feel the message and return to that new addiction. Those who return to meetings that are relapsed often think their desire to stop using what is born from the pain of relapse. We come to now for many reasons, but we stick to the power when we find them people desire to stop using. The truth is not the jury of desire. We cannot measure what arbitrary willingness. Any addict's willingness to come to a meeting ought to be a sufficient indication of desire. It may take a while for an addict to find the desire that will keep for working in narcotics anonymous. No addict should be denied an opportunity to stay long enough to develop that desire. We can nurture that desire with loving acceptance. The wording of the third tradition reflects the front focus of our first step. It's written simply enough to include edits of all countries and cultures, no matter what drugs they use. Before finding recovery in NA, many addicts don't see that alcohol is a problem. Others abuse prescription medication, thinking that legal drugs are okay. Because of the wording of this tradition, we are able to attract and welcome addicts. Might think they didn't use the right drugs to qualify for membership in now. Each addict should be allowed to decide if now is the answer for being more herself. We cannot make the decision for others. Although the third tradition is written simply, we know that when it cuts apart a desire to stop using, it means using drugs. We understand that now is a program of recovery for drug addicts. Although addiction takes on a broader meaning for many of us as we continue in recovery, it's important to remember that we first came to not focus on our drug problems. If you remember how to feel that they belong in NA, they need to feel something they can identify with. They find that identification in the fellowship of recovery addicts in narcotics anonymous. Many of us know when we got into our first meeting that we're addicts. It's not something we have to decide, it's just a fact of life. Membership, however, means more than just being an addict. It means making a decision. If we identify with what we hear in NA and relate with the people we meet, we will want what now offers. So long as we have a desire to stop using, we are free to make the decision to join narcotics anonymous. Then, once we made that decision, we need to follow it with a commitment to the principles of now. This that commitment, we set ourselves starting on the road of recovery. Applying spiritual principles, the third tradition encourages freedom from judgment. It leads us on the path of service to all and include our thoughtfulness, acceptance, and unconditional.
additional lives. As we've seen in the previous edition, our pet officer was arrested from the application of principles. Some of the principles that support this tradition include tolerance, compassion, anonymity, and community. Tolerance reminds us that judgment is not our test. The disease of addiction does not exclude anyone. Now, likewise, cannot exclude any addict who desires to stop using. We learn to be tolerant of addicts from different backgrounds than ours. Remembering that we are not better than any other addict in anything. Addiction is a deadly disease. We know that addicts who don't stand the common can expect nothing better than jails, institutions, and death. Reducing admission to any addict even one who comes merely out of curiosity may be a death sentence for that addict. We learn to practice tolerance of addicts who don't look like us, think like us, function like us. We teach by example, treasury, curiosity, Remember to tap our app like we do may send them back to the streets. It certainly denies them the right to recover and learn in their own way. Compassion lends kindness to all our efforts in service to others. With compassion as the foundation of our actions, we learn to support members through any difficulties they may experience. All too often, we are quick to judge the quality of another's recovery or willingness. Tradition 3 asks us to set aside our self-righteousness. Because the only requirement for membership is a quality we cannot measure. The right to judge another's desire is denied us. Our attitude has to be one of loving acceptance to all ethics. No man will she see. Will she see? Introduction. Sun. Welcome. Look of you 
having new friends is a discussion of the transcripts and the tradition of Narcotics Anonymous. We realize that Puerto Rico or Marco, no discussion of something as personal and individual as recovery can be of things to all people. This book is not meant to be an exhaustive study of the steps and traditions, nor is it meant to be the final word on any aspect of recovery or nativity. Rather, it is meant to help you determine your own interpretation of the principles contained in our steps and traditions. We hope you will find personal growth, understanding, and empathy in the following pages. We pray you will be moved to a new level of insight into your recovery and the valuable ways you occupy as a member of Narcotics Anonymous. Each member of NAC has contributed to this book in some way. Whether you are new to recovery or one of our longtime members, your experience, your support, and, above all, your presence in the rooms where addicts meet to share recovery have been the motivating forces behind the production of this book. Will the process of writing a book about the experience of a fellowship as standards and all that you can see, these are all the barriers and stumbling blocks in the lack of our primary purpose to carry the message to the still suffering addict. Let one purpose, clear and powerful, stands alone in our collective consciousness as the only thing that really matters. With that, all is possible and miracles happen. The nature of the recovery process made us the title for this group. After all was said and done, one fundamental truth of much as the fruits of our program is run. The reason our program works, the how and why of recovery, are found in many places in each other, in our relationship with a higher power, in our thoughts and minds, and finally, in the collective wisdom of our members. Because our principal endeavor in the development of this group has been to capture that collective wisdom in written form, we believe the title of this book is most appropriate. It works how and why. We pray that this book fully represents the therapeutic value of one and in helping another. We offer this book as a gift, and it would be and hope our love and concern for every enemy who is praying our way of life comes across as fully as we feel it. Please use and enjoy this book. Share it with your friends, your sponsor, and the people you sponsor. After all, it is through sharing with each other that we find our own answers, our own higher power, and our own path of recovery. Book 1. The 12 Steps. The purpose of this portion
portion of the book is to invite members to engage in a journey of recovery and to serve as a resource in gaining a personal understanding of their spiritual principles in the 12 steps of Narcotics Anonymous. This portion of the book explores the spiritual principles in each step and how we experience them in our life. We believe that the steps are presented in a manner that encompasses the diversity of our fellowship and is reflecting on the spiritual awakening described in our 12th step. Step 1. We admitted that we were powerless over our addiction. That our lives had become unmanageable. As addicts, we have each experienced the pain, loneliness, and the fear of addiction. The whole coming to an end. Most of us that ever seen, we could think of to control our use of drugs. We kept switching drugs, thinking that we only had a problem with one particular drug. We kept limiting our drug use to certain times or places. We may even have what to stop using of the better at a certain point. We may have told ourselves we would never do the things we watch other addicts do. Then found ourselves doing those very things. Nothing we had had any less to effective. Our active addiction continues to progress, overpowering even our best intentions. Alone, terrified of what the future held for us, we found the fellowship of Narcotics Anonymous. As members of Narcotics Anonymous, our experience is that addiction is a progressive disease. The progression may be rapid also, but it is always downhill. As long as we are using drugs, our lives will steadily get worse. It will be impossible to precisely describe addiction in a way that is agreeable to everyone. However, the disease seems to affect us in the following general ways. Mentally, we become obsessed with the song music. Physically, we develop a compulsion to continue using, regardless of the consequences. Spiritually, we become totally self-centered in the source of our addiction. Looking at addiction as a disease makes sense to a lot of medics because, in our experience, addiction is progressive, incurable, and can be fatal unless arrested. In Narcotics Anonymous, we deal with every aspect of our addiction, not just its most obvious symptom, our uncontrollable drug use. The aspects of our disease are numerous. By practicing this program, we each discover the way in which our addiction affects us personally. Regardless of the individual effects of addiction on our lives, all of us share some common characteristics. Through working the first step, we will address the obsession, the compulsion, the denial,